My name is Penilla Tranberg. This is my real name. This is my original identity. I use this when I'm online, when I'm on Twitter and on LinkedIn, and when I act professionally. And I love social media, I have to say that. But I also have another name, um, this name, Pia. I used that for seven years on Facebook. And all my friends know me. Um, and I use it on Pinterest as well. And that's because I'm not professional there. Um, I tend to be a little more private on Facebook. And I also created a third identity, Nana Back. Um, and that's because so many pages and apps ask me for personal info constantly. And if you go to fakenamegenerator.com, you can completely make a really good identity where you get everything from height and weight and eye color and even credit card number. <laughs> so, so why am I so uh, kind of almost obsessed with this, you, you might think. It's because I, I did this book with a very good uh, friend of mine called Stefan Hoyer, who lives in San Francisco. And the research for this book was a, a huge eye-opener for me. What is actually happening out there on the web? and on your phones. Um, we are complete, we are surveyed 100% in everything we are doing. And to understand that, you have to understand everything about big data. You've probably heard about big data. It's a buzzword these days, right? And one of the best examples some of you might have heard was the supermarket Target in the US who wanted to uh, get to women before they got pregnant. Actually, even before they even knew themselves that they were pregnant. So they hired some data scientists and they took all the data they had themselves on their customers and enriched that with data from social media and databases and everything they could buy. And then they created a pregnancy prediction machine. And then they could start marketing their products to these women who didn't even know yet that they were pregnant. And they were so successful that one day a father came down to Target really, really annoyed, saying, well, you're sending these uh, coupons uh, to my 18-year-old high school uh, daughter as if you want her to be pregnant. And yes, she was pregnant. And he came back two days after and apologizing, saying, I didn't know she was pregnant. And that's what big data can do. Uh, it can predict things we can't even imagine what is happening in the future. It can predict, predict suicides. <laughs> it can predict whether you're getting pregnant or you're, you are getting an alcoholic. And what can, what can that data be used for? It's only up to your own imagination. Another example of big data is Instagram. A lot of you are probably using Instagram. <laughs> Why did Facebook pay a value higher than the New York Times? It's an, it was an app making no money. Two years old, 13 people work there. It's because of data. There's so much data in Instagram. Of course, also because it's a mobile app. But there's so much data behind every picture. Every single picture, you tell Facebook where you took it and who took it. And then this whole social graph, you're sharing everything with your friends. That's a lot, worth a lot of money. So we're talking about a gold rush. And World Economic Forum calls personal data the oil of today. That is what is making the whole digital world function. And as soon as something becomes so um, valuable, uh, everybody wants it, right? And we are seeing a black market for it as well. And a guy called Joy Ito, who is the director of MIT Media Lab in Boston, he compares the situation today with the situation in the 50s and 60s, 60s where people were polluting uh, the environment. We didn't think about it at that time. And today we're paying a high price for that. He's saying what we're doing today is we're polluting with personal data. And many of us are going to pay a personal price later. I don't know if it's true, but it might be. And that's why I'm worried. It's all about your personal data. It's not one single Facebook update or one search. It's a puzzle. Everything you're doing is collected in big data banks, identity banks, and then it's, it's stored and resold. For example, a data broker, Axiom in the US, they have like 500 million profiles on people. And every single person, they have 1,500 data points on those people. It's not something you join voluntarily. They just take it from the web and databases. And they know, you know, what, what are you eating on the aeroplane? Um, what are your vacation dreams? What are your health worries? <laughs> Everything you're searching on and what you're sharing yourself on Facebook and all the other places. The title indicates that I'm going to talk about sex. 
I'm not talking about sex in real life, I'm talking about data sex, which is actually a, a, um, something wired, for, uh, called this, what I'm going to tell you about now, in the last issue. We have kind of two kind of people. We have a person at one extreme who is 100% private, who would never be on Facebook and never share anything. And at the other end, we have the data sexual, who will be completely sharing everything. You know, they'll have a night fuel band and tell everybody, uh, well, I've been running so long now, and uh, they're measuring their pulse and everything. And I think I'm somewhere in the middle, leaning towards a private person, and I'm going to get back to that as well. For me, it's all about con trying to control who knows what about me when. It's not the traditional term privacy, it's about controlling my own personal data. That's what I'm trying to with this. Well, the data sexual, apart from sharing everything uh, um, with his health, he will also share everything on Facebook and uh, has an opinion about everything. You all know that kind of people. Maybe some of you are uh, one of them as well. And what you are is that you're becoming transparent. And that's what the, um, Facebook's founder, um, Mark Zuckerberg, wants us all to become transparent and so-called authentic. That's what he's working at. Um, and some people, some data sexuals, really love it. They get something sexually out of it, I think. Because they, there was a survey uh, on 200 Germans um, where they had to put in their desires constantly on their phone. And of course, uh, eating and sleeping were their first desires. On number four, it was watching television and checking your Facebook, updating on Facebook. Number nine was having real sex. So we also know from other surveys and studies that people are getting something in exhibiting themselves on, se on Facebook is giving something in the brain similar to what you get when you have sex. This data sexual probably also spit, sent his spit to this company because they are collecting genetic uh, testing. Um, and this company is one of the biggest ones doing DNA profiles and it's founded by the wife of a Google founder. And Google has a lot of money in this company as well, so they are also collecting our DNA profiles. All this is a movement today called radical transparency. And being completely transparent is maybe a good idea if you are a 70-year-old professor. You have your last job. You uh, have your insurance. You have everything. But if you're young, you just have to think about what you're doing. Because there are lots of risks, risks out there. Social profiling is a huge new area. Every, every employer will make a social profile on you before you get a job. Of course, you can get so much out of Facebook and uh, Google, uh, Google search. Uh, why not do that? It would be stupid. This woman was fired because of that single little update. You might think that's stupid, but that's what's happening constantly. So what are they looking after? They're looking after photos, sexual drunk photos. They're looking after any indicators that you have racist beliefs or homophobic or anything like that, violence, drugs, etc. And they are also looking at your friends, which by default are open on Facebook. Do you have the wrong friends? I mean, it, are you friends of gang members or friends of friends of gang members? They're also looking if you are oversharing. Are you sharing everything? Maybe you are not so secure. Maybe you are a bit insecure. Can you keep a secret? That's very important for a company. And do you complain? Uh, are you somebody who's constantly complaining or gossiping about colleagues? We don't want those kind of people in our company. So just some numbers, nine out of 10 are actually doing social profiling today. And we are also doing it when we're looking for a business par partner. We are also doing it when we're dating. Uh, when your date is going to the toilet, you're just checking her <laughs> online. But, and seven out of 10 are actually rejected because of their social profiles. But remember, seven out of ten are also getting a job because, because of it. So if trimming your online reputation in the right way, it, makes you, it gives you a job as well. I have 3,000 followers on, on, on Twitter, and I'm constantly trying to get more and trim my online reputation because I know it's very important and it's fun, of course. Insurances is another huge area. This is a friend of mine, Lisa, who is sharing with everybody on Facebook that she and her husband is sitting down in France right now drinking a lot of wine. Fun, yeah, you've seen those pictures before. But robbers out there are following everybody, and they have a huge house in Copenhagen. And um, 
they, they might rob that one, right? And that's one thing that's really annoying. But the, co the insurance company, the next step they will take is say, why should I cover that? I mean, you put it on your front door. You told everybody you are not home. And we, and we are already seeing cases like this in the US. This is a UK company, a UK insurance company. And they say, well, if you let yourself be monitored 100%, everything what you're doing in your car, then you might get a better coverage. Because then they can take your behavior, like how often do you rest when you are on a long drive, and they can match that to the behavior in big data, and then they can assess how much should you pay. And that might be good if you are always a good driver, but all of us are always driving a bit too fast, and I think it's too high a price to pay for your privacy and being your own individual. And the next step is, that will be the same with health insurance. And remember, it's not only on the web. Apps are much, much worse. If you look at your iPhone now, probably four out of 10 of your apps know that you're sitting here because you told them, yes, it's okay to monitor my location. And they also have access to your contacts. Identity theft, theft is another risk. All of you have probably heard about that. It's very good to have a lot of fake email addresses to use for that and avoid uh, that. The whole tracking thing with cookies and tracking devices is, is something you can also do something about because many of you have probably tried to uh, check out an airline pri a price for, an a for a flight and you've gotten away from the site and when you got back again, it was higher. And that's because they're using cookies, right? And that's only the first step today of how pricing will be. It will depend so much more in the future on your former behavior. It will depend on your mood, it will depend on health, your health, if you're sick, on your physical state, and maybe also on your DNA. That's what the big companies are working on now, that if you, uh, you we know that you will buy more if you're depressed. So why not target you when you are depressed? And you probably told that on Facebook, consciously or unconsciously. So people like Mark Zuckerberg, he's trying to make us all very transparent, but I think he has really, really misunderstood the premises of a democracy. Because in a de democracy, you can expect transparency from huge, powerful entities like companies and governments, but you shouldn't expect that from the individuals. We individually are the weak parts of a society. We have a right to be private and control what people know about us. But that's what he's trying to change, and that's what worries me mostly. Because if you are too transparent, many of us risk becoming the target. We know that from history. And if you look around, everybody you know who are rich, powerful, and famous, are they oversharing? Are they telling everything about themselves? No, they're not. And you are becoming one of them, right? <laughs> to round off, German authorities are having the same message as I, I'm having. They're telling all their children to fake it on Facebook. Use another name. And children are used to that. Before they go on Facebook, they have been on The Sims, Movie Maker, Harbour Hotel, all the games they were playing, they always use pseudonyms. They know how to. They, they tell their friends, what is my play name? Uh, and it's really, really easy. But as soon as you get onto Facebook, they have a real name policy and everybody is giving everything to Facebook which is a bad idea. So what I'm doing, my faking, fake identities is very, it's a very primitive way of doing it today. It's uh, doing manually and it's, it's actually hard work, I would say. But very soon we will see tools coming out, helping us to manage multiple identities. Google and Apple, of course, already took out patents on ideas where they will help you with some software where you can have more identities but hopefully there will, be, there will be others than the trackers themselves, right? Until then, I'm going to put on sunglasses and a hat. Because you know, I don't know if you know it, but in Hong Kong airport, you can't wear a hat because it disturbs facial recognition. And Facebook is now using facial recognition. So if you do that, they can't use it anymore. And hopefully my friends can still say it's me. So to f finish off, it is all about controlling who knows what about me when. We have that right in the analog world. We should have that right in the digital world as well. 
And remember, it's not only about faking it. There are so many other tools out there. One really good tool is to install um, you know, um, these uh, small programs in your browsers who will stop anybody from tracking you from website to website. That's just one little thing. There are so many easy things to do, and I really think you should do it now before you get really rich and famous, because we want to know about you when you get rich and famous. Thank you.